Merry Christmas, Mariners fans, and let me be the first to say, chills. We have our first big signing of the offseason, Mitch Garver, on a two-year, $24 million deal, according to Jeff Passan of ESPN. Let's talk about it. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ahoy, sailors! It is Sunday, December 24, 2023. Merry Christmas Eve. This is Tiny Gonzalez and Colby Pattenhead for the Locked On Mariners podcast brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more, and right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 bucks if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On, that's L-O-C-K-D-O-N, to get yourself started. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. Subscribe, like, and turn on alerts if you're watching on YouTube, or subscribe and leave a five-star review on your preferred podcast platform if you like what you hear. And if you're part of the crew and rock with us every single day, let us know in the comments below. And if you want to hear from us even more, please consider signing up for our Patreon. You can now get a free seven-day trial to check out the show. The link, as well as our social accounts, is in the description of this episode. And of all the nights, the Mariners can make their first signing of the offseason. They just had to wait until I was well into my Christmas celebration. You know what kind of celebrations I'm talking about. So this is going to be, a, um, let's say, a fun show. Per Jeff Passan of ESPN, the Mariners have signed Mitch Garver to a two-year, $24 million deal. This is now the biggest contract the Mariners have signed a position player to in the Jerry DePoto era, which uh, that's a whole nother conversation. Uh, Garver, of course, is fresh off winning the World Series with the Texas Rangers, whom he was with since 2022. He played his first five years in Minnesota, was drafted by the Twins, of course. Uh, this year, he slashed 270, 3500 with 19 home runs and 50 RBI over the course of 87 games played. He was worth 2.1 wins per fan graphs. He can catch a little bit, but he's mostly a DH. Value here is almost entirely in his bat. And the Mariners get some of the offense they desperately, desperately need. They're not done. They're not done for sure. This uh, only puts a dent into what they need, but it certainly helps. It's Colby. Your reaction to the deal? I guess we're not the Oakland A's after all. That's right. I we're, guess we're, we're not starting the rebuild all over again. We were slowly but surely seeing them turn into the yeah. Oakland Athletics right before our eyes, Colby. Sure, sure. A little bit of hyperbole, but not much if you look at some of the comments we get. But uh, overall, you know, at I mean, let's just start at the base level, and this is something we can all agree on. The Seattle Mariners are a better baseball club today than they were yesterday. Which makes this yep. a good signing. I'm mm -hmm. not. I'm, I'm not doing backflips over this. This isn't like, oh my god, they're going. They're going to the World Series. There, or anything there like are this. concerns, which we'll sure, get into. Sure, yeah. sure, we'll get into that later. But when you look at what Garver is, he is a guy who has hit essentially every year of his career um, to some degree. There are a few, you know, if a few uh, bumps in the road, but this is a guy who last year in particular really hit the ball hard. He barreled it up a lot. Um, he walks a ton. He doesn't chase last year, 98th percentile in chase percentage understands what the strike zone is now strikeouts, mm, a bit of a concern, but when you consider that Tay Oscar and Mike Ford were kind of primary DH last year and they both struck out 31% of the time, give or take, uh, you, you look at what Garver's done the last few years, 24.7, 23.8% walk rate, pretty consistently between between 10 and 12 percent um he hits the ball hard there's some good pull power here he's a good hitter mm -hmm. i don't i don't think that any i don't think you can take anybody seriously who would try to sell you on the idea that mitch garver is a below average hitter that he's just a, an okay bat he's a legitimate hitter um so that is a good uh good sign here uh, if you're wondering how the bat how the power plays um, at, at, uh, T-Mobile last year, he would have hit 22 home runs, same as he hit in Texas. Uh, there's a lot of bright red, uh, in his, uh, stat cast profile, which is obviously a good sign. Uh, so this is a guy who 32, 33 years old, uh, has started to kind of explode as an offensive threat is again, there are some concerns here, the age, the durability and all of that. But overall, Mitch Garver is a good hitter who is more of a line drive hitter uh, who does have significant pull power. The power will play fine in Seattle. 
Um, you know, not quite as well as Jorge Soler, but it's dead pull power. He's going to be fine uh, at the plate. I think ideally you'd like him hitting fifth or sixth for you yeah. uh, in a good lineup. But again, this is a this is a good hitter. He helps. There are concerns, which is why we're not doing backflips. Every uh, every free agent has red flags, right? Yeah. Garvers are a little bit easier to see. Uh, so on top of you know all that, he absolutely smokes lefties. Uh, but he's more than good. He's more than capable against right-handed pitching as well. This isn't a, a platoon guy uh, that you have to worry about. So uh, Garver, it's a good signing. I was a little worried uh, that. Seattle in desperation to get one of these DHs would go and try and offer like a third year to somebody like Garver. And, and you don't want to give Garver a third year. I was worried the AAV might get out of, out of control a little bit. This is a two year, $24 million deal, $12 million AAV. That's fine. I wouldn't be shocked at all. If this was backloaded a little bit, maybe it's uh-huh. 10 million this year, 14 million next year um, to try and ease some concerns. And, you know, it doesn't seem like a big deal to, you know, Seattle only gave him 12 and we thought maybe he would have to get 15 is, is the $3 million really that big of a deal? Well, it accounts for perhaps as much as 10% of Cherry Depoto's entire budget. So yeah, every million dollars you can shave here or there, unfortunately is going to matter. So I like Garver. It's a good fit. It's not a home runs. It's not a home run signing. It's not, you know, it's not, we're going to the world series. It, it, you still have a lot of work to do. This isn't the final piece. It can't be the final piece. Yep. But overall, again, at the end of the day, and this is the most important thing we'll say, the Seattle Mariners are a better baseball team today than they were yesterday. Right. And everything That's else. All that matters. Yeah. I mean, again, there's lots to debate. Nobody's saying this is the perfect player. Yeah. yeah. But what cannot be denied, Mitch Garver helps the Seattle Mariners. Cool. Period. End of story. I am a bit surprised that they were able to sign him to the steal without giving that extra third year, without giving a bit more in terms of the AAV. Obviously, I don't know what other teams were offering Garver, what other offers he had on the table, what those conversations were like behind the scenes, and we never will. Uh, but we know what the reputation of you know is of Seattle, uh, especially for right-handed hitters who are signing you know more shorter-term deals. And Garver, despite some of the red flags here that we'll again we'll go over a little bit later on in the show. Uh, he's one of the better hitters on the market. Um, so I'm yeah. I'm pretty surprised uh, with the, the valuation of this contract and the structure of this contract uh, and that the, the Mariners were able to get this thing done. Uh, so I think this is a, a major win for the Mariners um, just from that standpoint. Um, Garber's, you know, they're getting him for his age 33 and 34 seasons. You know, he's obviously a, a mostly a power-reliant uh, right-handed hitter. But we're talking about power that should be able to translate to T-Mobile Park pretty well. Uh, Park Factors uh, had him at 22 home runs at T-Mobile Park. He hit 19 this year overall. So that's above uh, what he did this year. So that's good. Uh, That means uh, essentially that his power will, uh, especially his over-the-wall power, should play up at T-Mobile Park. Uh, It's mostly pull power. Um, And as long as he can stay to his pull side with that power, uh, he should be good to go, and he should be good for, you know, if, if he can play 100 games for just the second time in his career, that's a big yeah, if, and again, we'll, we'll, we'll get, get into that. But but uh, but if he can if he can play that often, then he should be good for 20 to 25 home runs. Yeah. Again, this makes uh, the Mariners better, um, and I would say significantly um, than they were a day ago, than they were a couple of hours ago. So, you mean going from Sam Haggerty to Mitch Garver yeah. as your primary DH is an upgrade? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. Surprised by that. I know, kind of a hot take. I know, but uh, I know. Th- that's that's what locked on once. You know, they they want sure. us to make big bold proclamations. So, will uh, the yeah. one thirty eight WRC plus improve the Mariners? <laughs> mm. Mitch Garver better than Sam Harrity. You hear, heard it here first on Locked On Mariners podcast. I, I mean, like that's that's some flamethrower language. We better be careful. <laughs> I'm bringing the heat on Christmas. All right. That's Let's right. Uh, get more into this signing in just a moment. But first, a reminder, this episode of the Locked On Mariners podcast is brought to you by FanDuel. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. 
that's 150 bucks if your team wins. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and a whole lot more. And the Mariners might not be playing right now, but the Kraken and Seahawks are. So whether the action is on turf or on the ice, whether it's Jared McCann or Gino Smith, you can bet on it all with FanDuel. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's L-O-C-K-D-O-N and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the National Football League. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you again for making us your first listen after the Mitch Garver signing. And as a reminder, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So, Colby, we've hinted at some concerning things with Garver, some red flags with Garver. What specifically are those, though? Well, he's 33 years old. Uh, yeah. That is typically not a time when players accelerate their career. It's when they tend to start to slow down. Um, there are exceptions to that rule. Uh, most notably Nelson Cruz. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, you guys know about that. Mitch Garber uh, yeah. is Nelson Cruz confirmed. Sure. Mm-hmm. We can confirm he's better than Sam Haggerty, but we can't confirm that he is in fact Nelson Cruz, but maybe, maybe. Um, no, that's so what yeah, you that, just said. You, you just said that he's Nelson Cruz. All right. Take another sip of your grown up juice and mm-hmm. quiet down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Maybe work in a longer and next time while you're at it. Uh, so yeah, 33 years old. Obviously that's a concern. You don't want to, ideally be paying for somebody's age 33 and 34 season. Uh, but you know, that that's just part of the, the risk. Uh, the other part is uh, he can catch once in a while. It's not something you want him to do. Um, you know, he's not awful. I would say he's probably still about as good as Tom Murphy, but obviously the more you catch him, the bigger risk he gets hurt and you're paying for the bat. So you don't want him to catch a ton, maybe 20 games a year, maybe 30. Uh, And then obviously he's going to be the primary DH. So uh, his lack of defensive versatility is a bit of a red flag, although he does have some, because again, he can manage for a game or two beyond the plate. He does have some experience playing first base. So you can kind of put him in the field every once in a while. He's not, jd martinez where he is just a dh but that is a concern you have to work around that and then the biggest one is clearly his availability uh is an issue he's never had 400 plate appearances uh in a season um i don't think he's gotten to 400 i think he's topped out in the 380s uh, i think he's only played in 100 games once in his entire career your hope would be your sincere hope would be is that by taking catching pretty much off his plate entirely and just sticking him as the primary dh that that will help him play more games but kind of hasn't this is kind of the first year where he didn't really play defense at all um and he still only played 89 games so we'll have to see you know uh the mariners load management is is interesting uh it does i i personally would treat garver as if he is the third catcher like you're not you're mm. not you're not you know dfa and sebi savala uh right. because you have mike napoli as your backup no sebi is the backup mike uh, napoli then, sorry well they're very similar players yeah, uh, yeah I, I think I think that's getting into your your next point, right? <laughs> Is that yeah, this could right. be Mike Napoli in theory, which we've right. talked about in the past, right? And Mike Napoli, ironically, was a guy that I really wanted the Mariners to sign. I don't, I, I don't. Well, yeah. almost ten years ago now, yeah. I just he was Same. a great fit, DH catcher, yeah. some first base, played for the Red Sox, yeah. I think before. And I was yep. just like, I don't know. Did he go from te- he, Texas he, to Boston he, or Boston to? I Texas? think he went from Texas to Boston. If, so uh, I'm gonna Texas I'm guy. gonna look I'm gonna look sure. it up. So, I'm gonna look it up. A lot up. of similarities between Mike Napoli and Mitch Garver. So who's also on uh, the Angels, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that that's kind of where you're at, right? It is he's an older player. He's never played a full season before, um, and there are some concerns with how much value he can give you defensively. Although, again, 
if you're DH full time, but you can catch 20 games and not absolutely murder the team, that has value. It does. I mean, even yeah. again, even if it's only 20 games, that is 20 fewer games that Cal Raleigh has to catch, or it's 15 fewer games that Raleigh has to catch, and five fewer that Sebi Zavala have to catch. So there is value there. And again, he can play some first base. I don't. Seattle's not going to come out and say like, oh, he can play first base unless they trade Ty France. But that could be a part of the plan, and that could be how Seattle can still go get Jorge Soler or could go get Reese right. Hoskins, is that yeah. if they can or are wanting to or get an opportunity to trade Ty France, they have some options there as well. So right. there are some red flags here. Again, this is why we said it's not a perfect signing. We're not you know doing backflips exactly, but Garber's a good hitter. You feel really comfortable about that. Although, fun note, Garber is a exciting 0 for 23 at T-Mobile Park. Zero career hits at T-Mobile Park. I hope that changes. I, f- I feel pretty confident saying it's going to, but, you know, we'll see. Uh, um, uh, don't tempt fate. After last <laughs> offseason, don't tempt fate. Ugh. Yeah, something happened in spring training. Um, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, so there are some red flags with Garber. Uh but that doesn't mean he's a bad signing. So, so 246, 346, 475, 119 WRC plus, 27.5% K rate, 12.2% walk rate. That's Mike Napoli's career uh, line. Uh, Mitch Garber, career wise, 252, 342, 483, 123 WRC plus, 25.6% K rate, 11.1% walk rate. Barely, he's Mike Napoli. barely similar. Fairly similar. He, he's, and yeah, that's as, over a large sample size. He's Mike and as Napoli. and as someone who also wanted Mike Napoli long, long ago for the Mariners. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of living my dream here of that, which was a, a small dream, but a dream nonetheless. Sure, sure. So <laughs> well before any of us had a podcast, we were <laughs> right, right, right. We were both long before we even knew the other one existed. We were both on the Mike Napoli train back back when I wanted Josh Hamilton, Mike Napoli, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, uh, Ooh, <laughs> yeah, and really and we were we were right. It was uh Texas then Boston. You know, yeah, Napoli so. started his career in in Anaheim. Went yep. to Texas in 2011, then went to Boston in 2013. Uh, yep. Yeah, Napoli had a very good career, and uh, yep. hopefully Garver's on the the same track here. Uh, Garver has been kind of like up and down in terms of like one year he's amazing, one year sure. he's mediocre. Like 2020, he was awful, but also it's 2020. He also only played in 23 games out of 60 that year, just 81 plate appearances. He did strike out 45. Yeah. And a half it's, percent of the time that year, forty-three WRC plus. It's but outside really of that, hard to put yeah. any value in twenty twenty on either direction. Now, again, keep in mind he's only played over a hundred games once in his career. Yep. But of the, we'll call it five full seasons he's played, full seasons he's played at the major league level, he's only been a sub one hundred WRC plus guy once. So 98, 98, 98, 98 in 2022. Yeah. yeah. Um, so outside of that, though, 2019, that's his career year. He was worth four wins that year in Minnesota, played 93 games. He hit 31 bombs in 93 games that year. 273, 365, 630, dude. 630 slugging percentage that year. 155 WRC plus. Then 2021, 139 WRC plus. And then this past year, of course, 138. WRC plus. So when Mitch Carver is good, he's really, really freaking good. I really, really, really good. Yeah. I feel pretty confident he's going to be a 120 ish WRC plus guy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Assuming he, he plays or he's healthy enough to, you know, uh, which is the concern. But if if he, if you get 110 games from Mitch Carver, you like he's healthy enough to give you that, I feel like you're getting at least a 120 WRC plus guy and probably 25 home runs. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like we said, the, the power should play at T Mobile Park. It's it's mm-hmm. definitely not something that the marine layer should kill, like we've seen not with entirely. some other uh right handed hitters, right handed power hitters rather that have come through Seattle right. in years past. So he's yeah. a little more a little more of a pull power guy than somebody like Teoscar Hernandez, who has a lot of power to right center field and center field. Napoli's yeah. power is mostly pull. Napoli. You said Napoli. I did it again. Darn it. Yeah. I mean, they're very similar players. It's, it's, it's scary. It's pretty close. It's pretty close. It's it's scary how, how similar they are. 
he he definitely uh he definitely pulls the ball a lot though if you look at his 2023 spray chart i'm looking at it right now yeah not a lot of balls to uh center and right field uh it's mostly Mm -hmm. uh dead left and then uh left center actually quite a quite a bit of uh home runs to to left center which is a pretty deep part of t-mobile park so that's a little concerning but Park Factor says that he would have hit 22 in Seattle this past year, so I guess not too too concerning. But we'll, we'll see. see how it works out. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. You're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you again for making us your first listen after the Mitch Garver signing. So now what, Colby? Uh, you mentioned possibility of trading Ty France. I don't think this necessarily precludes them from still going after guys like reese hoskins jorge mm-hmm. soler etc it just makes that fit a little bit tighter uh and means that they would likely have to trade ty france now we know that the uh, the twins were sniffing around france around the trade deadline this past summer uh they're obviously trying to offload some of their contracts with max kepler jorge polanco obviously the mariners need some outfield help help so kepler would make sense there Uh, And trading France would also take, we don't know exactly what he's going to make in arbitration, but I would say around $6 million off the book. So if they need more financial flexibility, that could help them accomplish that for sure and would essentially pay for about half of what uh, Garver's owed in in annual salary. Now, we don't know if this is going to be backloaded or not or whatever, but uh, but yeah, Uh, Garver does have 51 career innings at first base, which is obviously really nothing but he has played the position at the major league level in the past maybe that's an option for the Mariners especially if they were to sign someone like Soler who you don't really want playing in the outfield uh but yeah where where do you think the Mariners go from here I'm going to assume that their next move is probably not going to come until the new year but who who knows they weren't supposed to make a move today would have said that 12 hours ago (laughs) yeah 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 so we were all watching the Seahawks game thinking like oh this will be it for sports for the week until yep, Tuesday, yep, at least yep, for the weekend. Yep. yep. And go Hawks, nope, by the way. Nope. Go Hawks. That's right. <laughs> Gino. Yep. yep. Uh, MV Gino. The, the best, officially the best Gino in in Washington now. Right, um, yep, yep, yep. Also, Colby Parkinson, best Colby P in Seattle sports. Mm-hmm. Well, best Colby PA for the day. Sure, I'm happy yeah, to yeah. give that title to my Colby PA brother. <laughs> um, by the way, they should run that play like at least once every every trip in the red zone, but whatever. Um, yep, so yeah, yep. next is interesting. I I can't get over the fit between Minnesota and, and Seattle. That seems so obvious, particularly a Kepler for uh a Kepler for France swap. That just makes so much sense. Yeah. Kepler is a left-handed bat. He before this last year was a plus defensive uh, right fielder and was still pretty solid this year, just not quite as good. Um, he really kind of found his power stroke and uh, he was able to hit a ton of home runs. It's lefty pull power. That's exactly what you need in Seattle. You really could use a lefty bat to complement this this lineup right now. To me, Kepler just makes a ton of sense. You don't have to trade Ty France to get him either. If you want to keep Ty France, you can definitely get a deal done with with Minnesota that doesn't include uh, France. It's just the salary offset there. Like essentially, you can make Kepler a four million dollar ad if you were to include Ty France in that deal. So I think Kepler is kind of the guy I'm looking at right now. But depending on how this is structured, you know, there are a lot of things you could do. You could go get Reese Hoskins and, and again, trade Ty France for Kepler. And if you go Garver, Hoskins, Kepler as your three bats, that's a pretty good lineup. You could also, and we talked a little bit about this, is what if you go and you trade or what if you, because you were able to, hypothetically, let's say that Solaire was going to cost $16 million, right, a mm-hmm. year. And you got Garver for 10 this year. You take that $6 million that you otherwise would have given to Solaire. And now you go and you go get a reliever. You go get a starting pitcher. And now you're freed up to go and trade Bryce Miller, or at least you're more likely to trade Bryce Miller. So uh, to me, when I look at this club and I look at what's out there, I think Kepler is the best fit. Uh, I think he's the most likely to add. I think that Minnesota's desperation is going to match your, uh, your need for a left-handed hitting corner outfielder, uh, mm-hmm. ideally. So I think Kepler's the guy, but I could see them spending some of this money on pitching. I could see them going out and getting one of the other like two or three big bats. Maybe it's Justin Turner who could play first and third a little bit. Maybe it's mm-hmm. Reese Hoskins and you trade Ty France. Maybe it's, you know, I mean, it's not Cody Bellinger, but maybe it's Cody Bellinger and, and like you, that's your outfielder. And sure. so, yeah, I, I think, 
I don't think Seattle can necessarily be done with the free agent market. I just wonder if there is a scenario where you can go out and, and spend the X, <clears throat> let's say they have $20 million just for easy math. Like who are you going to give $20 million to on this free agent market? Probably a couple guys. So I think that's what we're looking at here. I, I think you're either going out and I think maybe it's possible you go get Adam Duvall and you kind of yeah. have a can zone Duvall and then you go trade for Max Kepler. There are a lot of different ways you can go here. Uh, Mike Ustrzemski down in San Francisco, left-handed outfielder, can play center field, mm-hmm. can play left and right, pretty good hitter. He's a good fit for T-Mobile. He sprays the ball all over the place. He's got some pull power. That's a guy that you might be able to get. We'll have to see what San Francisco does, Lamont Way Jr. Mm-hmm. I, I think, like in terms of priority, you're still looking for an outfielder. That's the number one concern. I would like yeah. that guy, ideally, to hit lefty with some pop, but also a pretty, at least a solid average hit tool. I would like that guy to also be able to play defense a little bit. To me, that's Kepler. To me, that's Yastrzemski. One of those two guys. And then after that, you have to be a little bit careful because you've, you've, I, in theory, you filled the DH spot. Mm. So you can't get a guy who has to DH. You have to kind of go and get a guy who can at least play a position well enough that he won't kill you. And really, when you look around the diamond right now, the only two spots to get that guy at bats or either in the, is a corner outfield spot or maybe second base. Go find a second baseman who's a, who's a obvious upgrade over Josh Rojas and Ryan Bliss or Dylan Moore. Right. Good luck. Yeah. So right now, Mitch Garber looks to be the full time DH. So mm-hmm. for now, I'm going to say good on Jerry Depoto and Justin Hollander for looking at this roster, looking at this lineup, and going. You know what? We don't have the depth to justify rotating guys to the DH spot. Let's just go get the best bat we feel uh, we can get to fill that spot out. So. Uh, thrilled about that. That's something that I've been asking for for a while. I'm glad that they've done that, and maybe they do that again uh, with you know Hoskins or, or Solaire or someone like that. It would be more so uh, more so Solaire if we're talking about that and within that context. But uh, but yeah. Um, now for what it's worth, which I'm just going to tell you now isn't a whole lot, but a couple weeks ago it was the I think it was the day that the whole like Shohei's flying to Toronto thing happened. So I think that's sure. the 15th. Yeah, the 15th. So nine days ago, I was told the Mariners have about 30 to $35 million to work with. But there's a lot of confusion, a lot of you know conflicting reports out there about how much money the, the Mariners front office actually has to work with right now. So who knows? But if it's 30 to $35 million, uh, they still have quite a bit to work with right now. And again, they can trade France, who's going to be about six ish million dollars. They could also trade Dylan Moore, who it's only three million dollars, but a three million dollars could help you in theory get someone uh, if you need it. So they do have a couple more levers they they can pull without you know having to dive into the whole like Luis Castillo and Robbie Ray and all that type of stuff, uh, which I don't think is going to happen. Um, so based off of what I've been told, they they should be able to do pretty much anything they really want outside of like Bellinger right now. So we'll see. We'll see what they want to do. We'll see what's coming up next. But thankfully they've made a move now. (laughs) We actually have something tangible. We can sink our teeth into that affords us some context finally when we're talking about this roster, which is what we've all been waiting for for the last few weeks. Nothing else. It checks something off the box or it checks the box off the list, right? Yeah. 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 We have a right handed bat, DH. Like we have that position filled. Like we're good. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see what's next. Obviously, what happens next is always the bigger, uh, storyline. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, the Mariners gave you a little, a little Christmas Eve present. I guess Jerry believes in opening presents Christmas Eve, Mm -hmm. which is the question of the day. Uh, Christmas Mm. Eve or Christmas morning, when you open gifts, there's only one right answer. Um, and it's not today. So, uh, yeah. But at the end of the day, Jerry gave you a little gift. And the gift mm-hmm. is, is that the Seattle Mariners are a better baseball team today than they were yesterday. And hopefully we can say the same thing three or four more times before pitchers and catchers report. And uh, it's just it's just nice to be on the board with a pure addition. Like, no, no trying to figure out what Jerry's yeah. thinking. No, like... Uh, you know, this is, this is bad. Why did it's they just make a, a generally like positive addition? Yes. 
Now I know people out there will find a way to make it negative because oh, that's yeah, just yeah. Mariners Twitter, baby. Right, right, but right. Everything is doom and gloom. Nothing will ever work out for the Mariners. Yada yada right. yada. Because it's the Mariners, same old Mariners. Sure, sure, mm-hmm. of course, yeah. of course. Like the team hasn't won like 265 games in the last three years, but sure, no, yeah, they they're terrible at everything. Uh, but again, the Mariners are better today than they were yesterday. We'll see how much better they are on March 27th. I think is opening day. We'll see how much better they are on March 27th than they are on December 24th. And by the way, just just to throw this out there because I love to leave you guys with a little bit of of you know doom scrolling. Oh, no. This deal is still pending a physical. Mitch Garver, the healthiest guy in the world. Yeah, he has had some in- injury woes in the past. Think yeah, about yeah. that while you wait for Santa tonight. But uh, <laughs> I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> go get Max Kepler. Go get Reese Hoskins. Call it an off season. Um, sure. And, you know, and just and keep Miller, keep Wu, and and go get yourself some bullpen help, please. Thank yeah. you. Please. Yeah, Please. like I, establish bullpen help. I know you've added some relievers this offseason, but establish you, bullpen. Like, I'm just asking for Jacob Junis. Like, can you go spend five million bucks on Jacob Junis, please? That'd be cool. Also, be cool. by the way, rotation depth. There you go. Hey, hey. Also, we got a new Mitch. New oh, Mitch. New right. Mitch. New Mitch. New Mitch. Are we getting? Are we? Are we going to say Meech? Or is he going to get the Meech title? Does he have to earn Probably it? Is not. there a possibility of him earning the the Meech title, or is that yeah, only reserved so. for a certain? No, I, I think there's a shot. I think okay. there's a shot. All right, cool, cool. All right, there we go. There's also go. a shot that we get two Mitches. Just saying, just saying. San Francisco can't be happy with that Mitch, contract. Mitch Moreland. Mitch Moreland's coming to Seattle. Confirmed. <laughs> See, here I am trying to give you guys a nice idea. Mm-hmm. Mitch Haniger returns at like three million dollars a year because San Francisco eats all of his contract. But Mariners trading for Mitch Keller confirmed. That would be amazing too. <laughs> that would I'm open to multiple Mitches. Mm-hmm. Mitches mm-hmm. be crazy. That's right. That's right, baby. That's gonna do it for our show. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked On Mariners podcast for Colby Patnode. I'm Tidane Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Ty Dane Gonzalez and Colby at CPAT11. That's CPAT11. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. Thank you again for making us your first listen after the Mitch Garver signing and here on Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas, everyone. Have yourself a beautiful baseball day. We'll see you next time. Peace.